We're in week number three of At The Movies. And to be honest with you, um, this is the one that I have been dreading. This is the one I didn't want to do. Um, this is the one that I, I wrestled with God over for a while. I wanted to do Matthew um, because I knew who we're showing today is going to be some of you when you walk out of the doors today. And I've spent a lot of time on my knees praying for you, praying that as we have this series, as we hear the experience of Nicodemus, that it would not be you. That the same response that Nicodemus had would not be your response. Nicodemus was searching, he was looking he was a re religious leader of the day. He understood. He knew the Old Testament. He knew the law. He had it memorized. He was a leader of leaders in the Sanhedrin. But the problem was when Jesus came, he couldn't let the fact go that Jesus just didn't match the picture that he had painted in his mind of who Jesus was going to be. And at the end today, I'm going to, spoiler alert, I'm going to ruin it for you, so plug your ears if you don't want to hear. Um, but at the end of the day, Nicodemus, after everything he's seen, after everything he's experienced, after everything that we as a church have seen God do, after everything that we have experienced, Nicodemus chose not to follow Jesus. And I have been praying and praying and praying. That at the end today, there would be a response like no other. That we would begin to say, I'm not going to casually follow Jesus. I'm not going to casually chase after Jesus. I'm not just going to be somebody that just, I, I follow Jesus when it's convenient. I, I follow Jesus when it's easy. But that we would be a church that goes after Jesus with everything that we have. And we would not be left standing around a corner with tears in our eyes, weeping. And these words coming out of the mouth of Jesus, you were so close. And so today, I want you, as we watch this, I, I want you to just begin to pray and ask God to work on your heart. Today, as you've come through the doors, are you Nicodemus? You got a lot of questions and questions aren't bad, questions are good. The Bible says to test, test who God is. Test everything. God is not afraid for you to explore, to find out whether or not he's real. That does not scare him. What scares me is when you come to your conclusion, you still choose not to follow Jesus. That's where Nicodemus was. So today, week three of At The Movies is Nicodemus. It's you. It's real. Lilith. No, no, please, don't be frightened. My name is Nicodemus. I, I ministered to you, Lilith. I don't answer to that name. I am Mary. I was born Mary. But you were called Lilith, yes? Please, I must go. No, no, please, Mary. I, I am desperate for your help, Mary. I'm a, I'm a Pharisee. I'm visiting from Jerusalem. I'm a man of God. And I believe you have experienced a miracle, Mary. Are you really a Pharisee? Yes. I'm sorry, I wasn't... I'm not here to enforce Jewish law. So how do you know who I am? You really don't remember me at all. I burned incense? I don't remember. It's all a blur. I can't go back into that. No, no, I don't want you to. I can't even imagine. But you you are healed. That that much is clear. I, I just want to understand how it happened. That makes two of us. <laughs> 
How long after my visit did you feel the change? It wasn't anything you did. It was someone else. Some... one... else? He called me Mary. He said, I am his. I am redeemed. And it was so? Who did this? I don't know his name. And even if I did, I could not tell you. Why not? His time for men to know has not yet come. His time for men? <laughs> he performs miracles and seeks no credit? Well, what does he look like? Is he a member of Sanhedrin? Would you at least know him if you saw him again? <laughs> I don't know why I am sharing this with you. I... I don't understand it myself. But here is what I can tell you. I was one way. And now I am completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. So yes, I will know him for the rest of my life. <laughs> I have to be home to prepare for Shabbat, as I'm sure you do. So mean that you're even hosting Shabbat dinner. It will be nothing like yours, I'm sure of that. But I'm going to try. Shabbat Shalom, Nicodemus. Shabbat Shalom, Mary. Nicodemus comes across Mary. And Nicodemus is shocked and in awe of the incredible change that he sees in Mary's life. See, you remember, the last time we saw Nicodemus, Nicodemus had been called into the red quarter in order to come, in order to help Mary, because Mary was possessed by seven different demons. And now all of a sudden, as Nicodemus comes around the corner, he comes in contact with Mary and he sees Mary and his response to her incredible change is this I'm desperate to understand how this has happened I'm desperate to understand how this has happened see Nicodemus is saying this Mary there is something different about you and here's the interesting thing Mary's response Mary's response to Nicodemus, there's something different about you. You're not the same person that I encountered before. You're not the same person when I ran into you last time, when I saw you the last time. You're not the same way. Maybe some of you, this is the exact same response that some people from the past now have about you. Maybe some people from your past are saying the exact same thing. There's something different about you. You're not the same person that you used to be. You're not the same person that you were. And here's what Mary says. A very profound statement. Mary makes this statement and says this. All I know is I was one way and now I'm different. But she said this. She said there's something in the middle and that something in the middle is Jesus. Mary was one way. Now she's different. And the only way to explain the change is Jesus. I used to live like this. I used to act like this. I used to talk like this. I used to run with this crowd. I used to have this kind of reputation, but now I'm different. And the only thing that I can tell you is Jesus. See, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. See, old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. 
Here's what I want to encourage you with today. Your life is a testimony of that middle of Jesus. See that middle section right there where Mary says, I was like this. Now I'm like this. The only thing I can tell you is Jesus. Your life is a testimony to people of this middle section that is Jesus. Nicodemus now finds himself searching for Jesus because of what Mary had made a change in her life. Because Mary was one way and now she's different. And because of that, Nicodemus says, I'm searching for Jesus. Here's what I want you to understand. Your life should point people to Jesus. Your life should be able to show people this is who I was. This is who I am. And the answer for how these two collide is Jesus. I was this person. Now I'm this way. And the thing that made a difference in my life is Jesus. My eyes are tired. Would you mind reading to me from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah? Comfort, comfort my people, says our... A little further down, a few lines. A voice cries, in the wilderness, prepare the way of Adonai. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Hmm, and who does that sound like? The heretic John. And what heresy do you find in those words, being that Isaiah said The them? heresy is that John has appropriated Isaiah's words by taking a spiritual description of God in heaven and applying it to John's physical successor on earth. Successor? John said, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. And? God has no body. He cannot wear sandals. <laughs> God cannot take human form. To say so is blasphemy. And where does it say that God cannot take human form? In the scroll of Deuteronomy. You saw no face the day Adonai spoke to you at Horeb. Just because they saw no form doesn't mean God cannot take one. In Exodus, you cannot see my face for no man shall see me and live. This person would have to walk around with his face covered. Ooh. So you would place limits on the Almighty? None that are not written in law. And if God did something that you felt contradicted the Torah, would you tell him to get back in that box that you have carved for him? Or would you question your interpretation of the Torah? When I was a student, I knew all your sayings. I read every word you wrote. Your teachings were so sturdy, so reasoned and pure. We are still students, Shmuel. All of us. Our understanding will never be complete. It frightens me that I can no longer predict your rulings. And fear alone ensures we remain ignorant. Asleep in the safety of rigid tradition. Take the Sadducees. They take the first five books, the Law of Moses, as inspired scripture. The rest, they disregard. <laughs> to them, God stopped speaking when Moses died. Think of all they have missed. The Psalms of David, the stories of Ruth and Boaz, Esther and Mordecai. I don't want to live in some bleak past where God cannot do anything new. Do you? Why is that your concern? God gave us his law. We must uphold it. We can do both. Let's look to the ancient roads where the good way is and walk in it, as Jeremiah said and still keep our eyes open to the startling and the unexpected. Can we agree on that? Yes. You and I, we can lead the others in this. I beg your pardon, teacher of teachers. What's happened? A crowd has gathered in the east side to see a man preaching. A Pharisee? No, a common person. It's not John, someone normal. He has commanded the attention of the entire area. 
We will investigate. Excuse me. Quiet. I'm trying to listen. Do you know who you are talking to? Did you hear his disrespect? Remember the Red Quarter? We're out of our element here. We have to find out who is teaching. Look at this crowd. All the more reason to be cautious. Rabbi. It's her. She is truly restored. I only heard your report and I'd seen her for myself. She's a different person. Why? Yeah. On a hill. Can I... You saw it. I, I saw a paralytic walk past me on his two feet. You asked me before if I knew his name. Now everyone knows his name. And I fear for his safety. I mean no trouble to him. No dishonor. Your friends tried to have him arrested. They're jealous. They're, they're afraid. But I'm not. I promise. Mary, please. I need to talk to him. I follow him, not the other way around. He doesn't tell anyone his plans. But will you ask him for a meeting? I... In secret, under cover of night. <laughs> At a place of his choosing. I don't care if it's a ravine or a cave or even a tomb. But I just need to speak to him. Please, Mary. Nicodemus finds himself confused because of the tradition that he has been raised in, because of the education and the schooling that he went through, because of his knowledge, because of his intellect. He's confused because he is looking and he is seeing a man named Jesus and he is wondering, who is this Jesus? Could this Jesus truly be the Messiah, the Son of God? The one that we've been praying for, the one that we've been hoping for, the one that we have been looking for, to could Jesus truly be the Messiah but there was a conflict with Nicodemus because Jesus did not fit into what he assumed the Messiah would be and look like and so everything that Nicodemus had been teaching everything that Nicodemus had been learning everything that Nicodemus had been saying Jesus didn't fit inside the box and so here's what I want us to be careful with today don't put God in a box. See, some of you, I think when you walk through the doors of the church, faith is hard for you because your box is so small. Let me explain to you what I mean. I read a study on grasshoppers. Grasshoppers naturally in their wild state can jump 20 times bigger than their actual size. But that same grasshopper is taken out of captivity and that same grasshopper is put into a glass container. The container is only six inches high. And now that grasshopper, rather than being able to jump 20 inches, 20, 30 inches high, now is limited to only six inches. At first, that grasshopper did everything that it could to push the limits and try and you know, break the ceiling of the box and get out and reach its full potential. But the box contained that grasshopper. And eventually the grasshopper gave in to the limitations that was placed on him. And that grasshopper quit jumping to its full potential and only jumped to the potential of the box. Well, later on, that same grasshopper had babies. And those babies never understanding and knowing their full potential, only knowing what they were created in and the limitations that were created on them and placed on them because of the box, they only learned to jump that six inches not knowing that inside of them there was so much more, not knowing that inside of them there was so much greater, so much more potential. But the problem was later on, those grasshoppers were taken out and they were placed into a field. No regulations, no limit, no box. But still those same grasshoppers that were born in captivity continued to jump only six inches because they never understood and they never knew the potential 
that was right there in front of them. They were limited by the box that they had been placed in. For some of you, you walk through the doors and your faith in who God is and what God can do in your life is limited to the box that you are placing God in. And so I want to encourage you. Don't miss what God is doing because your box for God is too small. Welcome, Nicodemus. Don't be alarmed. He's waiting for you. I asked the owner of this house for more lanterns, but he said they would draw attention. Yes, I imagine they would. The human eye is drawn to light. We can't help it, it just happens. There are many things we are drawn to without our thinking or our ability to explain why. Thank you for agreeing to meet. Thank you for trying to help Mary when you did. No help. You were meant to be there. Me? So I could fail miserably at an exorcism in the Red Quarter? <laughs> if you had not been there that day, would you be on this roof tonight? I don't know where to start. I have so many questions. I... Shall we sit first? Oh, yes. slums. Hmm. Many wandering preachers have succeeded in gathering crowds with their rhetoric and fiery tone. I've heard a few of them over the years myself. So you know the type. Mm -hmm. But I have never heard anyone tell a paralytic to get up and walk, much less it actually happened. So what is your conclusion? I believe you are not acting alone. No one can do these signs you do without having God in him. Only someone who has come from God. And how is that belief going over in the synagogue? <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we are here at this hour. What else? What have you come here to show us? A kingdom. That is what our rulers are worried about. No, not that kind. Then what? A sort of kingdom that a person cannot see unless he is born again. Born again? Yes. You mean like a new creature? A conversion from Gentile to Jewish? No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Then what is born again? <sighs> I hope you don't mean return to the womb, because that would be a problem for me. My mother, may she rest in peace, is dead. Truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That part of you, that, is what must be reborn to new life. How can these things be? Ah, a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things, huh? I'm trying, Rabbi. I know, I know. Do you hear this? What? Listen. What do you hear? The wind. How do you know it's the wind? Because I can feel it. I hear it sound. 
Do you know where it comes from? No. Do you know where it's going? No. That's what it is to be born again of the spirit. The spirit may work in a way that is a mystery to you. And while you cannot see the spirit, you can recognize his effect. Mind is consumed with thoughts of what a stir these words would cause among the teachers of the law. Yes, and I do not expect otherwise. I speak of what I know and have seen, and it has not been received by the religious leaders. It is hard to receive. So if I have told you of earthly things, and you do not believe, how can I tell you heavenly things? I believe your words. I just fear you may not have a chance to speak many more of them before you are silenced. I have come to do more than speak words, Nicodemus. More miracles? Yes. But even more than that. Do you remember when the children of Israel complained against God and against Moses in the wilderness of Paran? Yes. They wanted to return to Egypt and they cursed the manna that God sent them. And then? They were bitten by serpents. And they were dying. But? But God made a way for them to be healed. Moses lifted the bronze serpent in the desert. And people only needed to look at it. So will the Son of Man be lifted up. So that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Our people are not dying from snake bites. They're dying from taxation and oppression. I'm sorry to disappoint you. But I did not come to deliver the people from Rome. Then from what? From sin. From spiritual death. God loves the world in this way. That he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish. But have eternal life. So this has nothing to do with Rome. It's all about... Sin. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, Nicodemus. He sent him to save it through him. It's as simple as Moses' serpent on the pole. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Have you ever heard anything like this before? Shh. When I met Lilith, Mary, that day, I told my wife and my students that she was beyond human aid. Only God could have healed her. And then I saw her healed. And here you are. The healer. see the kingdom I am bringing into this world. But I... I, I can't. You have a position in the Sanhedrin. You have family. You are getting advanced in years. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. But the invitation is still open. The invitation to what exactly? <laughs> to lead a nomadic life? To, to give up? Who I am. It's true. There is a lot you would give up. But what you would gain is far greater and more lasting. Is this another one of your born-again mysteries? <laughs> uh, maybe. I know mysteries aren't easy for a scholar. Think about it. Hmm? Take your time. On the morning of the fifth day, we leave and we'll meet by the well in the southern quarter at dawn. Is, is this... 
Is the kingdom of God really coming? What does your heart tell you? My heart is swollen with fear and wonder. You can tell me nothing except that I am standing on holy ground. <laughs> holy roof, anyway. I do hope you come with us, Nicodemus. You don't have to do that. What are you doing? Kiss the sun. Lest he be angry and you perish in the way. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. <laughs> Nicodemus is meeting with Jesus in private. Here's the thing this all started because Nicodemus failed to cast out a demon in Mary. But here's the thing, Nicodemus, what Nicodemus thought was failure wasn't failure. What Nicodemus thought was failure made it final. His failure was not final. See, Nicodemus didn't understand that there was purpose in failure. Could it be that sometimes when you don't get what you want, when things don't go the way that you want, could it be that there is purpose working behind that? For Nicodemus, there was purpose working behind that. And so after Nicodemus sits down, this meeting drove him, this failure drove him to meet with Jesus, to search out Jesus, to find Jesus, to discover who Jesus is. Jesus looks at Nicodemus and Jesus says this, Nicodemus, follow me. And Jesus says, I, I know who you are. I know you're an important person. I know you're a member of the Sandy. I know you're married. I know you have kids. I know you have grandkids. But Nicodemus, I, I want you to follow me. Follow me. Nicodemus looks at Jesus and says, I, I don't understand. You want me to give up everything that I've spent my entire life becoming? everything that I have tried to be, everything that I have spent my life to achieve. You want me to throw all that aside and follow you? You want me to just go out and live a nomadic life and give it all up for you? See, what you have to understand is this following Jesus is worth it. That's what Jesus was trying to tell Nicodemus. See, you're chasing things that you think is going to bring you fulfillment. You're chasing things that you think are going to satisfy. There's a void inside. There's an emptiness inside. And there's only one thing that can satisfy. And you think these accolades, you think these promotions, you think this money, you think these things are going to satisfy. But I'm telling you, if you will give these up, you will find the satisfaction that you have been looking for. Nicodemus. I read an article about Cameron Diaz. Uh, this was back when Cameron Diaz was the number one actress in the world. She was also the most beautiful woman in the world. She was also the number one bachelorette in the world. She was also the number one paid female actress at that time. She had everything. She was getting any role that she wanted. And yet when she sat down, she made this statement. She said, I've got everything, but there's still something missing. I have everything that the world has to offer. I, I, I've achieved everything. I've become everything, but there's still something missing. See, Nicodemus is trying to fill a void that only Jesus can fill with the accolades and achievement that he's received on his own. 
And he thinks that all of this stuff that he has accumulated is what's going to satisfy. And maybe some of you today are in the same spot. John 4.14 says this, but whoever drinks of this water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him springs of living water that spring up eternal life. Psalms 107 says nine says this, for he satisfies the longing of the soul and the hunger of the soul. He fills with good things. See, here's what I want you to understand. There's a longing inside of you. There's a hunger inside of you. And the only thing that can fulfill that, the only thing is that is going to fill that void for some of you that are sitting out here today, you're chasing, you're searching, you're looking, but the only thing that is going to fill, fulfill that is Jesus. Jesus looked at Nicodemus and Jesus said, follow me. Be everyone. Everyone's here? Yes, this is all of us. Is there anyone else? Look at this. What is that? I don't know. Let's find out. Gold. A friend of mine left that for us. It's enough for two weeks of food and lodging. <laughs> you came so close. What do you mean? We need to go for it to make it to a camp in Tiberius by nightfall. Simon is correct. Let's go. Wear that on a trip. These are my clothes. Should I have others? <laughs> so the question becomes. Are you going to be Nicodemus? Yeah. Are you going to chase after everything the world has to offer? You've seen the evidence of who Jesus is. You know who he is. Will you choose to follow him? Will you choose today to give your life to him? For some of you, you've given your life to him, but you aren't living a life that honors him. You aren't living a life that represents who Jesus is to a world. And so today, you have to make a decision. And this is why this, this week has been so hard on me. Because I know some of you are going to get up from these seats in just a minute and you are going to walk out and you are going to miss it. You're going to be Nicodemus standing around the corner knowing the truth but yet rejecting the truth. Knowing who Jesus is and the response that you need to give that he is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the savior of the world, the only one that can give you hope and a future. And yet you're going to choose to walk out of here and let Jesus walk right on by. And so today, 
The only question is, will you follow him? But I've achieved all this. I've done all this stuff. Will you follow him? What does that mean? What does that look like? Follow him. Follow him. Today. So I'm going to pray and we're going to do something different today. The band's going to come out. They're going to lead us in a song. And as we sing, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to come forward and then we're going to go right over here. Your left, my right. If you're saying today, I want to follow Jesus. Here's what you're saying. I'm not staying behind the wall. I'm not hiding behind a wall. But I'm going to step out and I'm going to follow Jesus. And maybe some of you today just need to come to the altar and you just need to begin to pray and you just need to begin to say, hey, I... I haven't been living a life that honors God. I I haven't been doing what I need to do. I I haven't been leading my family. I haven't been leading my my marriage. I I haven't been leading my kids. I haven't been bold when I go to work. And maybe what you need to do is just, you just need to come forward, not stay behind a wall. It's easy to stay hidden behind a seat. But maybe you come forward and you just say, hey, today I want some things to change. Today, I want to live a bold life for Jesus. Today, I want to respond to Jesus. And so today, if you want to give your heart and your life to Jesus, I want you to come forward. As you come forward, you're going to make your way right over to these doors right here. And we're going to have a team waiting on you. They're going to talk to you about giving your heart and your life to Jesus. And if you just need to come forward and pray, come forward and pray. But today, my prayer is this. Don't be Nicodemus. Don't leave knowing who Jesus is and miss him. Will you stand? Let me pray. God, right now we come to you. God, we ask that you would stir hearts, stir lives. God, change us from the inside out. Let us see you in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, as we sing right now, move and be obedient to what God's telling you to do. Don't wait on anybody. This isn't their response. This is your response to Jesus. You respond.